Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the AEW Dark Review, not to be confused with the AEW Dark Elevation Review, which is basically the same show on a different night, but I laughed because it went against an hour of Raw and hopefully took about at least thirty to 40,000 people away from that miserable show. In any event, um, the one thing that this show shows is that they don't have a plan for how to reduce the amount of stuff that doesn't need to be here. Um... Elevation and Dark are basically the same same show on back-to-back -back nights with different talents. Many of the individuals in AEW are talented. Many of them are not. There is no d distinction between which are and are not, meaning there is no build to these three now television programs or two internet properties and one television program. And if they're going to add a fourth show, that's even worse. The one drawback I see to a super fan with lots of money owning a promotion is that there's no real direction and everyone gets chances. Anyway, there are people on this program who I wouldn't even put on an indie show, let alone um, put on a national company. Anyhow, Luchasaurus defeats Caesar Bononi uh, with Peter Avalon. There's no reason for this to go six and a half minutes, but it did anyway. Um... Avalon has a heart-shaped pillow on wheels. It's called the Slay of Love. This is just dumb. Match is follow-up to an angle on um, the Elevation show where, with Benoni, Avalon, and Ryan Nemeth beat up Marco Stunt. I wish they'd thrown him off the side of a building, but that'd probably be better left for Paul Wright to do. Um... Benoni and Luchasaurus are running the ropes. Benoni just stops. Uh, he's lost. He does not belong in this type of atmosphere. Taz and Excalibur, which, my gosh, Paul Wright is so much better than Excalibur. It's not even funny, and he's done this once. Anyway, uh, they didn't try to cover this. They fight to the floor. Avalon trips up Luchasaurus. Benoni gets a near fall after a running boot. And some interference from Avalon. Uh, choke slam and a standing moonsault from Luchasaurus gets the win. Uh, this literally should have been maybe, I don't know, about 90 seconds, not six and a half minutes. Layla Hirsch defeats Savannah Evans in three minutes and 20 or so seconds. Uh, Hirsch has apparently signed a actual contract, which I think is good for business. Um... Anthony Agogo appears on commentary without introduction. That's because no one cares who he is. Um, Hirsch has, in fact, signed. Uh, Hirsch opens match with a release German suplex, which psychologically makes no sense. She hits a belly-to-belly -belly suplex on her much larger opponent, also making no sense. Hirsch catches a cross-arm breaker for a quick submission. Post-match, Hirsch gets into an argument with Vicky Guerrero, who's in the crowd. Maybe that means she's going to take on bigger people like Nyla Rose, which wouldn't be good for her career either. John Silver with negative one defeats John Schuyler, who's being wasted by this promotion in three and a quarter minutes. Um, um, I don't know. It's just sad. Silver wins the short match with a helicopter slam out of a torture rack. It's fine, but at the same time, um, shouldn't John Silver be past this type of match by now? Well, speaking of past this type of match, Penelope Ford, who is nice to look at but has very little wrestling acclimen, defeats uh, Tesha Price in three and a half minutes or so. Some people say she looks great. I don't. Penelope Ford, to me, is in the business because she married into it, not because there's a terrible lot of redeeming quality. It reminds me of the a, like the 90s of women's wrestling. I think it's a step backwards. Uh, she gets a near fall after a match, after a move called the Juice Box, and misses a handspring elbow in the corner, hits a back heel kick, and then hits a cutter off price. Um, why? Just why? Speaking of just why, Chaos Project, Luther, and Serpentico 
defeat, defeat Fuego del Sol and Drake St. Patrick on the eve of St. Patrick's Day in two and three quarter minutes. Um, anyway, uh, they attack their opponents before the bell, meaning Luther and Serpentico. Chaos Project is no more exciting to me than when they came here. Uh, this is done from near fall, broken up by Del Sol. Del Sol gets tagged, hits Tornado DDT for the second time in as many weeks. Uh, gets two count on it. Luther hits Del Sol with a pump kick, and Serpentico hits a Meteora off the top rope, which looks brutal, but should a guy at that level be hitting such a big impact move? Uh, Del Sol is being held prone by Luther, and Serpentico hits that meteor and gets the win. This is unnecessary. Kylan King defeats Jasmine Allure three and a half minutes. Allure looks okay. Uh, King hits some clotheslines, pull a hammer, and a hook kick. Hook kick seem to be popular for girls these days. Uh, King follows up with a giant swing. Leave that to Cesaro, please and thank you. Allure comes back with a face plant uh, for near fall. King counters second attempt on the Casadora with the Kingdom Falls. It's a face plant. Gets the win. Bad. Too many women's matches with women that aren't ready in the last 48 hours for my taste. Across all brands, by the way. Uh, Dark Order and Colt Cabana, Evil Udo, Stu Grayson, and Alan Angels with negative one. Defeat Fashion, uh, let's see, Angel Fashion, Baron Black, Very Morales, and Ryzen. Why an eight-man match? Why, why, why? Morales gets, uh, ends up catching Dark Order coming into the ring. Didn't He gets caught in their corner, doesn't go very well. Angels gets a near fall after the belly-to-belly -belly into a power slam, which was a really awesome-looking move. Should have been a finish, but... That would take psychology. Um, and then they worked over Cabana, Evil Uno, and Black tag in. Uno dominates. Grayson hits Black with the Darkness Falls. Cabana hits, gets a submission win with the Billy Goat's Curse. And that's a inverted uh, Boston Crab. Negative one. Uh, had to be pulled off a of black after the match. So now <laughs> this kid is beating up talent. I actually find that hilarious. Gun Club, Billy Austin, and Colton. Notice the multi-person match thing here. Notice that no one cares. Defeats David Ali, Adam Priest, and Seth Gangus in less than a minute. Austin hits Ali with a quick draw for the win. Um, anyway... Bear Country, Bear Bronson, and Bear Boulder defeats Dean Alexander and Brick Aldridge in 57 seconds. Why do you do these matches that are, like, less than a minute? I, I don't even... What's the point of putting on your gear? Anyhow, a Bear Country teams up with Jurassic Express against Matt Hardy's new unit on Dynamite tomorrow. Unfortunately, Boulder picks up both of his opponents, gives them vertical power slam. Uh, one on each shoulder, which was a nice show of power. Not my thing, but it worked. Um, Boulder is certainly strong. He piles them up on top of each other. Bear Country, Jamboree hits the win. Um, not, I mean, I don't like the bear, uh, the bear, the bear country thing, but I get it. I understand it. Um, Mick Kenilmaro with QT Marshall defeats D3. D3 looks like he should be pumping someone's gas. Anyway, uh, defeated him in just under two minutes. D3 tries to use quickness, does not get anywhere. Um, and then military press slam into a vertical power slam for the win. Kenilmaro wins. Big surprise there. Team I actually cared about seeing the Varsity Blondes defeats... Uh, Jarrell Nelson and Royce Isaacs in five minutes. Might have been a little too long, but Varsity Blondes have some potential, so I was glad to see them. Nelson and Isaacs looked decent here. Isaacs comes from the NWA. I also have an interview with him up here on YouTube somewhere. Um, Pillman comes in with a springboard clothesline 
a la his father. Air Pillman finisher gets the win. Good for them. Hope they do more with this team. Uh, Matty Wendlowski defeats Vet Vixen in about four and a quarter minutes. Uh, and I know I'm pronouncing that name wrong, but Wetlowski and Vixen are both students of Thunder Rosa. Uh, Wetlowski wins after an axe kick. Thunder Rosa is training decent enough women. However, there's too many women's matches on this program and not enough polish on the women that are here. Uh, so, SCU, Chris Daniels, Frankie Kazarian defeats... Carly Bravo and Aaron Solo in nine minutes or eight and a half minutes. Why? Just why? Why do we need this to be this long? Um, Daniels and Kazarians are the top ranked team in AEW. So Daniels and Kazarian against the Young Bucks. So the Young Bucks can be carried to a watchable match. It's probably upcoming pretty soon. Uh... They've been doing, they, being SCU, have been doing the um, same basic idea since they started the angle. If they lose, they're done. Daniels gets in trouble during the match because Arian comes in and makes the save. I assume this eventually leads to them either winning the championships and then breaking up and feuding with each other before Daniels retires or something of that nature. Uh, Kazarian always bails out the team for the win. Daniels goes for the Angels' wings on solo, counters into a spin kick. Uh, kick sends Daniels into his own corner and tags in Kazarian. Kazarian catches Bravo with a hard lariat. And then they do the, uh, the best moonsault ever deal. Uh, God, just why do these shows need to be this long? Anyway, Team Taz, Vicky Starks, and Brian Cage defeat Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela. Joey Janela. Employed? Why? Please explain. Um, I, I honestly think he's the significant other of somebody that works there. Or maybe they hired him because they were trying to help unemployment. Or, I, just why? Anyway, um... So Ricky Starks and Brian Cage with Hook defeat Sonny Kiss and Joey Janela. Again, they're wasting Kiss. I say this almost every time I see him, but they really, really are. Um, Janela goes for Tope on Cage. Cage catches him, turns it into a vertical suplex on the floor. Youch. Uh, Janela gets worked over for several minutes, as well he should. Hopefully there'd be a couple stiff shots in there. Nothing unsafe, just snug. Um, Hook throws a cheap shot in from the floor. Cage and Starks. Uh, Cage and Starks start to not get along. Hopefully Starks breaks off sooner rather than later. I think he's a major upside. Um, and so they could they could do that. You know, interesting. There's frustration in Team Taz after Revolution. Janela comes back with sliced bread on Starks. Get to tag on Kiss who goes after Cage. Kiss hits a meteor off the top. On Cage for near fall. Starks and Cage eventually gets on the same page. No pun intended there. They combine for a spine buster kiss. And Kiss and Janela come back with a double back suplex. Uh, Janela follows up with a splash from the top. And Kiss follows up with a 450. Um, but gets a near fall. Cage manages to get Kiss up for powerbomb. And he holds uh, Janela for power slam. Drops both men in the power slam power bomb combination position. Starks then tags himself in and goes for a spear on Kiss for the win. Um, again, there's issues with both teams at the end. And then we go to the final match of the night. Refuse to call it main event. 10 with negative 1. So does that make him 9? Defeats Jack Evans at 10.04. Proof that no one sees anything long-term in Evans, I can't imagine. Negative one stays on commentary. Uh, basically, they made it out that Evans cost uh, 10 the spot in the Re Le Revolution ladder match. Evan hits a flying flip to do Skywalker press for near fall. Evans follows up with a hamstring elbow in the corner. And Evans gets sent to the floor. Ten comes back with some clotheslines. Ten whips Evans into the ropes. And 
then goes after and, uh, and goes after him after a bit of pause in the actions. Uh, Evans gets a knee into the face of ten and then gets an advantage. Negative one uh, says they should get Paul White for the commentary on the match. Yay! <laughs> Somebody start a petition. Paul White replacing Excalibur everywhere. Um, because at least he has wrestling credibility. Evans and Ten engage in some really awkward mat work. Ten is not ready to be on a national product. Um, and then Ten comes back with a neck breaker and some clotheslines and sends him into the ropes, follows by a backdrop. It just, I don't know, it, it falls flat. And the helico runs out, distracts Ten. Evans hits a low blow, follows by a Phoenix Splash, and gets a near fall. So a Phoenix Splash, which used to be a finish, which used to be like Hayabusa's big move 20 years ago, is now a transition spot. Evans goes for a suplex, 10 counters into a full Nelson, and that put Evans out. 10 comes up bleeding from the mouth or nose, and but anyway, 10 gets a victory. Um, Yeah, just ouch. This, there's too many matches, too many talents, 15 minutes cut down, you know, two hours cut down into 15 minutes is because virtually nothing happens on these shows. I hope AEW becomes the most powerful promotion in the next 20 years, but they need to tighten up the number of people they have on roster. I would much rather see a roster of 30 guys where everyone's used every other week and everyone has a story than a roster of a hundred guys where you wonder why the heck someone's employed. Anyway, till next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Till next time, everybody.